today so we have a uh, some area uh, we need to cover under uh, payment services customers right now i will leave that small part because i want to give a small another note i may continue that one most probably uh during next week right so i will start today the new area so that's a very important area uh the i think i have already sent you a note that is customer protection laws and practices but remember this is not law right it is financial institute uh, clients management so therefore we are look at it how we can protect customers right so this is very important area and i want to tell you uh so there may be a lot of questions comes on this and this area definitely benefited for you for your commercial banking as well as your survey if a uh, students doing non bank financial institution also right so this very important area i am guarantee you don't want to study any other uh, uh any other like class on this topic right is a very interesting and very important area so we are going to start today customer protection laws and practices uh the tutorial which i said to you last week and my new remember and so so many lot of questions are coming from this area right okay so with this small lot so we will move into uh discuss about the uh oh. okay right going to cover customer protections laws and practices right so very interesting area okay first one now under this area so this is the syllabus we are not we are going to cover little bit of uh uh fiduciary uh, fiduciary relation responsibilities of a bank awareness of some financial product risk which i have already touched on and then we selling secrecy fair market practices uh, you know the protection regulations and schemes like customer charter right customer consumer protection act financial ombudsman and things like that right okay now so don't worry about it even though it is not in your handout right now if you really look at the human body and financial system we we'll try to compare now the financial system regulations also like a human analogy a body right now what is that brain we call the mess an intellectual and professionals of the economy of financial factor sector brain is a financial sector now the blood veins is the financial system so you go see the financial system and inside is the finance that's the blood finance of blood. Art is a sector of that, and other financial sector regulation, which you know, which monitor the circulations of blood, as well as the financial system. So entire human body is our economy, right? I will just tell you how important the financial system regulation. Okay. now we have a lot of uh, legal frameworks we have a lot of laws monetary law act banking act business finance act finance leasing act you see the registered stock and securities ordinance uh, foreign exchange act or then we have a securities exchange act regulations of insurance industry act payment and settlement act 
Credit Information Bureau of Sara, so many legal framework which protect the financial sector. Right? So, why a regulating financial institution is important? Why we need to regulate financial institution? Why it is important? Right? There are so many reasons. One is, as we keep on telling, not like any other business, the financial business, mind you, is based on trust and confidence. The financial institutions or financial business is based on trust and confidence. That's the important number one thing. Second one, you can see, you see the financial products are very complex. It's very not easy to understand, right? It is not so easy to understand. Third one, maybe banks are runs with the depositors' money, right? So banks' main capitals coming from customers, their deposits' money. Bank do their businesses with the customers' money. So we therefore we need to protect the system as well as the banks as well as the customers right and apart from that there we you know the financial systems in the backbone of the country's economy the financial system is the backbone and also usually you know that the financial systems or financial business is subjected to high risk so with these due to these factors so regulating financial institution or the system is very important. Clear? Right. Now, let's look at it another area. Why regulate? What is the purpose? Who to, why we need to regulate? So there are many reasons why regulations are passed in financial services. Many reasons. Okay, let's look at the first one. So, to protect consumers. We need regulation to protect consumers. And as explained to you earlier, so banks are run, so financial institutions are running with customers' money. So, we need to protect innocent consumer or customer. First point. Second, and also you need to maintain the soundness of financial institutions, right? We need to look after the financial institution, right? The collapse of financial institution, we know we have a knock-on effect. That means it moved to another one. This has a contagious impact. One financial institution failed, there may be a possibility of the people people to lost the trusted confidence there may be other financial institution so therefore we need to maintain the soundness of financial institutions sometimes people like now financial institution give loans now customers are not pay their loans so the financial institution have a problem so therefore there are some regulations not only to the protect consumers, but also to maintain the soundness of financial institution. Right? Okay. Third one. Not only to uh, maintain the soundness of financial institution. I knew we need to maintain the stability of the financial system. Now, you know what is financial system? Uh, financial system is consist of financial institutions, regulations, and uh, it consists of uh, infrastructure, right? So there are so many regulatory bodies. So, so we need to maintain the stability of the financial system. That means, so somebody give a check 
we must ensure that we can encash that check, can be converted to the cash. So when you go to the ATM machines, so we are going to withdraw the money. So you must expect some payment systems uh, stability, right? Fourth factor is to obviate or so reduce criminal activity concerning money. So that means why we need to regulate so we cannot allow in the stipule, I mean, illegal, I mean, uh, or what you call the unwanted people, illegal activities to take place within the banking system. Anti-money laundering, so terrorist fighters. You cannot send the money through the banking system to facilitate those activities. So therefore, remember why we need regulation to protect consumers, maintain the soundness of financial institutions, to maintain the stability of the financial system as to reduce reduce criminal activity concerning money. Right now you understand why we need to regulate. Right? Okay. Now we from today we we maybe uh, five seven weeks maybe seven, eight weeks sometimes, we are covering this entire thing. First, we'll take protect consumers. What action banks take? What action our regulators take? What action you need to take as customers to protect when you're dealing with dealing with banks, dealing with financial institutions, right? Okay, first we'll take protect consumers, right? If you really look at it, now why we need to protect consumers? You know, there may be some people who run financial institutions right can cheat you because financial products are so complex and most of the customers are not not so much thorough with financial instrument they are not so financially as sophisticated right so therefore we need to protect consumers now why because as I explained to you, the financial products are very technical in nature. How many of you are aware how to calculating the saving interest rate? Maybe FDs, yes. But when you're calculating your interest rate for savings account, daily balances, most of our are not aware. <laughs> we believe what banks are putting there. So because of the technical nature of the financial product. Second point, usually those bank contracts, now we know a financial businesses with the customers is a legally bounded contracts and we have entered into many contracts with banks and customers. But usually all most of these contracts are often one-sided favor. Now, who's favored side? Bank side. Right? That's a fact, right? That's X1. Information is also usually asymmetric. What do you mean by asymmetric? Only one side knows the information. And also, even the customers are having information. 
So they said difficult to understand. Sometimes it's not adequate information given by the banks to customers to understand, or even the information we provided, but they are either difficult to understand. Right? Okay? And also, now it is very difficult to compare the true picture of the price. Now, I think you can remember we discussed about annual effective rate. Can you remember? So we discussed annual effective rate, AER, right? Double your account in five years, right? So people get confused if you don't know what is annual effective rate, right? So we need to educate those customers for even for education. Educate the customer. They must have a very basic knowledge. So because of these factors, customers that have bad food, customers at a little bit of a disadvantage when you are compared with financial institution because of these reasons, right? So then it is duty of our regulator. Now who is our regulator? The bank regulators are Sri Lanka. CBS. Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Ah, Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Good. Good. Now you understood that part, right? Now we are going to look. There are so many things. What are the practices or laws available in Sri Lanka to protect those innocent financial customers? So today, we are going to discuss three important things. What is that? Financial ombudsman, deposit insurance scheme, customer charge. What is financial ombudsman? What is the role? What is the services? What is the duty? We are going to discuss. And how that role protect by protect customers. What is deposit insurance scheme? Have you learned these three things in any other subject? Not yet. Huh? Have you learned these things in any other subject, Puta? Yes, no? sir. All right. Okay. So now, under what subject you learned? Uh, A survey no, or? No, sir. It's uh, non-banking. Non-banking. Ah, oh, non-banking financial institution, right? Ah, you are doing as an optional subject. Okay, good. Right, so let's look at it now. So we need to look at it from our customer's point of view, but doesn't matter. Okay, now we can take your knowledge also. No? Now see, once I explain all these things to you, I may take some of the questions came on. I, I'm always telling you, no, I'm taking other people questions, no? The questions came on commercial banking. The questions appeared in uh, survey. Questions coming from non-bank financial institution. Even up to the last year, the, I mean January exam, we will try to understand. I'm giving you a hundred percent assurance. If you with me of these three. Uh, areas you can answer any question in any subject but I will give an assurance right I can give an assurance I will tell you everything about financial ombudsman I'll tell you everything about the deposit insurance scheme I'll tell you everything about the customer chart okay right so then after I explain all this thing you tell me yes sir what you said is correct. Okay, right. But a very interesting thing. And uh, you don't want to remember again. You don't want to study again for any subject. I, I'll guarantee you on that. Okay. Now, before that, I need to have a small uh, chat with you. What is that? Now, uh, so you know, 
so we have we are, we are going to have the exam somewhere in uh, uh, somewhere in uh, most probably maybe they are planned to have it on early June or in May right so now I am going comparatively little less I mean little less mean I am very slowly start to discuss with you all all this thing and I discuss in great length so therefore so you know the st students uh, need to support me right now you know why so we have because most of the lectures they put extra classes at the end of the uh, right now they are fresh in the last minute so therefore I don't want to have things like that so therefore I want to have some extra classes very early and then finish it off very small now you know what I am telling no but still, can anybody tell me why Bokata the Sir in Nadan? Can anybody tell me huh? what I am going to tell now? Right now, what I am going to discuss with you or tell with you. Uh, so, we are uh, this now, this Poya Day, right? It's on when was Poya on Friday, no? 28th. When was the Poya Day? I think Friday or. I think I can't remember. Okay, anyhow, most probably 26th not Friday. Of, 26th of February. That is Friday, Uta. Yeah, yeah, sir. Right, okay. So, how about now? I don't want to, after that, I may, may not continue to do things like because otherwise, what happened? Everybody put classes, there may be overlapping some classes, right? So, therefore, but I am intended to have it on this year. Uh, we may have some break in between. I think uh, I will, David, they, uh, they uh, told me you don't have any extra classes on that day. They have not put it yet. So therefore, are you okay with me? So we will uh, continue with this and the balance what we have left because I want to give you some small note. Because if you really look at this time, there may be a lot of questions asked about this payment settlement system. So we, I want to explain you in detail. Uh, I may touch on that and continue with this and this will continue, right? So are you okay with uh, on uh, four a day uh, from 8.30, uh, inclusive of break, we may go up to 12, 12.30. So don't worry, we go slowly and we have some breaks in between. So you're okay. Huh? Okay, then. I need a feedback from you. Yeah, right. Okay, yes, I got sir. one. I got some messages. Yes, okay, okay, right. Then I will confirm, right? So we are meeting you again on this foyer day, 8.30. Uh, so we have prayers right don't worry uh, so I will have a time for that this this is poor day no so don't worry we will have the in between we'll have a uh, break right so 12 30 or before that we may uh, take into account so then we, I will confirm it reconfirm it this four year from 8 30 12 30 uh, so we are going to have a um, lecture Right. Okay. So we'll have a break somewhere in 11:30. There, people say they're going to mock. So we will discuss on that matter. Right. We will flexible handle. Okay. Right. So by the time being, you ensure that 12:30. Uh, so we will continue this one, and we will proceed with the uh, previous one. I mean the. Uh, uh, some there are small area to be covered that uh, uh, type of clients the payment service customers we need to discuss what is fintechs and then we need to discuss about uh, something called what is open banking uh, then we need to discuss about what is gas and then we need to discuss about uh, what is pain and lot uh, new things, you know. So a lot of questions asked on that area. That's the time I I have some, take some time to discuss with you next week. Oh, and the 
uh, will continue from this. Okay, right. So we will see you on next. I will confirm with the institution. So we are the, uh, meeting eight thirty. Right. Thank you very much for your kind cooperation, because that is very easy for me. I can go slowly. Otherwise, you know, I need to rush your papers. Right. Okay. Now we'll start one by one. Okay. Right. We we'll take financial ombudsman. Right. Some of the things in your handout. Some of the things I am telling you, you can note it down. Right. Okay. Financial ombudsman. Now there are three, you know, there are there may be a four or uh, three ombudsmen uh, in Sri Lanka. Can tell me uh, what 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 is the ombudsman in signal in signal? Dugganna Ral, Mama Dugganna Ral Ral na hatur dani ko adur. Who are they? One for parliamentary ombudsman. Parliament is no Dugganna. Right? Now you know insurance, insurance, remember insurance field like it in you know, uh, ombudsman. The famous ombudsman in insurance but recently died, there was Dr. Vikrama Veera Surya. He's a very famous uh, writer uh, in a lot of uh, uh, banking uh, textbooks was written by him, but he's passed away recently. Right? He was the last financial ombudsman. Uh, so not the financial insurance. We have an insurance ombudsman, we have the parliament ombudsman, and we have a financial ombudsman. And another ombudsman I know, I think some of you may or may or know, that is Vasanta. Vasanta Dukkandara. So, right? Hatara. So, we have a three ombudsman in technically, what are those? Financial ombudsman, insurance ombudsman, and parliament ombudsman. Right. Now, uh, big, why, why, what is this the ombudsman scheme in Sri Lanka commences from 1st December 2003, right? 1st December 2003 onwards, this financial ombudsman scheme in Sri Lanka came into effect. Now, what's the objective of this ombudsman scheme? Now, one way is a good thing for protect customers. Why? How? Now, suppose if something uh, financial institution, right? Financial institution do some injustice to the customer. Now, what customer, innocent customer can do? If he want to file action against the bank, he has to go to the courts. Say for some example. Now you know once you go to the courts, if you go to the courts, it's like you know, married a married woman or married boy or a purchase an old car. Right? Right? So without going to the court, so the customers, financial customers can approach this ombudsman and try to find out, uh, try to explain their problem to the ombudsman and through the ombudsman. So they are going to take some solution without paying much money otherwise you know court lawyers fees you know and uh, the case was postponed you can imagine the headache you're going to face no? right so without going for court so financial customers if they have any problem can go to the ombudsman and lodge their uh, complaint and the ombudsman Call both parties, call the customer and call the financial institution and try to settle the problems. Right? That is why the ombudsman scheme, the objective is to satisfactory settlement and 
resolutions of the complaint resolutions of the complaints or disputes by customers of bank and other financial institution covered under this scheme right so what one thing now from this slide you need to know what is the objective of ombudsman scheme right that's the area you need to learn so what is the objective of the ombudsman scheme right ombudsman scheme satisfactory settlements and resolutions of complaints or disputes by customers of banks and other financial institutions covered by the scheme right that is the objective of financial laws right now the questions go next this is your march 2017 can anybody tell me the answer the name of the present financial ombudsman in Sri Lanka is who is that? There are four people: one, Mr. Walter Laduhetti, Suraj Mapa, Anand Kumar Dasa, and Ranjit Ranaraja. Not Suraja, you Mapa, right? So, who is the present financial ombudsman in Sri Lanka? This is your 2017 question. Now, presently, he also performing. Who is the first? Who is the present financial ombudsman? Can anybody tell me? I will give you a clue. He worked earlier at DFCC. No idea. D? D? Huh? D, sir? D. Who said? Ranjit D. D. Answer, Ranjit, Dr. Ranjit, yes, sir. Right. Okay, I'll tell you. Now, examine the word, ask you all these things, right? First, once they established the financial ombudsman in 2003, and the first ombudsman is Mr. Walter Landuit. He's a retired judge. Usually, this form, this position, is a respectable position. So, it should be a person who knows about a little bit of law. Right, especially the commercial and the banking law. So Sri Lanka first financial numbers is ombudsman is who? Walter Landuva Hetty. First. Then the second guy is Mr. Mao. Third guy is Dr. Ranjit Ranaraj. So now who is the present guy? So we have a fourth person now. Fourth person is not Puttarajitra Raja Doctor, he is Mr. Anand Kumar Das. Right? He is our present financial ombudsman. Where is this financial ombudsman office is located? Can anybody tell me? Huh? Where is this financial ombudsman office located in Sri Lanka? It is in the central bank? No, no, not central bank. No? Where? It is situated in the Wajira Road, just goes to a Vishaka College, right? Wajira Road in Bambalapiti. Okay, just to know all these things, right? Some more things we need to learn, right? Who is the present ombudsman, in financial ombudsman in Sri Lanka? Is Mr. Ananda Kumar. Okay, clear. Right, we move into the next one. Now, who are the members or members of the financial ombudsman scheme? Right? That means the issues comes out from these institutions only. The financial ombudsman can take action, so can do some activity. So who are the member participants or scheme? Licensed Commercial Bank in Sri Lanka. Licensed Specialized Bank in Sri Lanka, Registered Finance Companies supervised by the Central Bank in Sri Lanka, Primary Dealers Licensed with supervised by the Central Bank in Sri Lanka, and Leasing Companies licensed and supervised by the Central Bank. If the examiner asks you the second question, the third question now, who are the participating Financial Ombudsman Scheme, who are the member uh, institution, 
We covered on the financial ombudsman scheme. What's the answer? Licensed commercial banks, licensed specialized banks, registered finance companies, registered specialized leasing companies, and all primary dealers. There are five people. So that's another thing you need to know. Any problem customers are had with these people can go to the financial ombudsman. Now, right, I want to tell you another important things. Right, can go, I'm just asking you some important practical things. A customer can go straight away to financial ombudsman and put any complaints against particular bank. Can anybody straight away go to the financial ombudsman and make a complaint any answer yes or no now i want to tell you this now in sri lanka if you have some problem you can channel a specialist consultant now you can consult a specialist right but in UK, you cannot consult specialist doctor. First, you need to go for your uh, the a family doctor or other physic other doctor. I mean, who is the other guy you call? Uh, not the family doctor and other uh, medical officer. Nobody can go straight away to the specialist doctor. Right? Only when the usual medical officer give a certain to uh, not to the particular uh, specialist doctor only, he can inspect that or he can uh, find uh, that patient, check that patient. Otherwise, this is legally wrong. It's legally restricted. Right, but Sri Lanka is not that. No, you can go to straight away to the specialist. But UK, you cannot go. First, you need to go to your medical officer, and then physic physician can only refer that to a specialist. Likewise, remember when you have some problem with some financial institution or uh, for some reasons, first you need to have a complain with this particular corresponding or particular financial institution suppose you have a problem with the commercial bank so first you need to complain your issue or can bring your issues to the commercial bank if the commercial banks not give you a good solution if you are not satisfied with the solution given by the commercial bank, then only you can go to the financial ombudsman. First, you need to complain to the respective financial institution. If you are not satisfied or if you are not getting the satisfied answer or solution, then only you can go to the financial ombudsman. Right? Remember that. That also very important thing. Right. So therefore, the financial ombudsman, remember, has the power to inquire into and settle any complaints and disputes between individual customers and financial institutions covered by this ombudsman scheme. Clear now? So he has the power to inquire into the and complaints try to settle or find, uh, try to complain so dispute settlement right usually the financial institution is not going to fight with ombudsman right financial institution except what the ombudsman is saying right now you know what is financial ombudsman role what if a complaints come to financial ombudsman for that, 
you know, very, very small amount the financial ombudsman charge. There's a small form to be filled that charge only 250 rupees. Imagine when you go to the law, lawyer, 2,500. No, that is why. So that ombudsman will facilitate customer. Right? At least they know there is somebody to talk on behalf of him. Financial ombudsman. 250 rupees. Now what financial ombudsman? He himself go through the complaints and usually call, send a letter to the particular financial institution and request you to try to settle or otherwise. And he asks the representative from the financial institution to come and call the customer also and try to sort out this problem. But still, the customer is not happy with the financial ombudsman decision. He then can go to courts. But a lot of people are not go like that. We try to settle, then then they are. But customer has the right to go to the courts. Right? But it's not so, will not usually happen like that. So that's a financial ombudsman role. Try to settle any complaints or any disputes. Right? Okay. Now, what are the services offered by a financial ombudsman? What are the services offered by a financial ombudsman? Right? It may not in your handout. But, uh, but try to put some arrows, right? What are the services offered by the ombudsman? Now, you know, as I told you earlier, the ombudsman is an independent person appointed by legislation that been according to the rules and they were appointed, right? And what is main job is to provide settlement for complaints made by customers of financial institution. That's you are aware, right? Okay. Now, what ombudsman do? He try to sort it out. The conflicts arising out from the transaction between customer and the bank, particular institution, and try to satisfactorily settle that. So, what are the usual complaints? What are the usual complaints come by the financial institution? by the customers now i have the recent figures right according to the complaints sought out by the uh, ombudsman which i knew personally a lot of complaints are coming from the with regard to leasing issues with regard to leasing problems right majority of uh, complaints are coming about the leasing issues. But another complaint, sometimes they talk financial institution not action in a professional manner when the tour, when the customer complain something about the financial institution, they have not taken actions, uh, they have not had handled that in a professional manner. Uh, so the instructions given in their leaflets or anything, uh, they are not acted accordingly, they behave in a different way. Those are the complaints usual, right? Other complaints, right? So it is in your hand now. But usually, bank, customer, any other participant can complain on this, usually for non-payments, inordinate delayed payments or collections of checks, non-issue of draft to customers and others, non-adherence to prescribed working hours because they said you open for seven hours, eight hours. When you go to the bank, it's closed. And they say due to COVID, the only limited staff are working and blah, blah, stories, right? Failure to honor guarantee or letter of credit commitments claims in respect of unauthorized or fraudulent withdrawals from deposits account. So somebody has taken the money, right? Somebody has fraudulently withdraw his customers' money, right? There are so many 
things ombudsman can handle right complaints by customers pertaining to the operations of any customer accounts right and then the complaints from export customers about mishandling of customer export bills right and complaint relating to the violations of directive of the central bank directions complaints in respect of the charge and fees lived by the bank right so remember so these are the complaints usually uh, can lodge with the uh, with the uh, ombudsman and these are the type of complaint usually comes so you at least you need to know few such complaint because sometimes the examiner can ask you right you can easily say non payment of delayed payment or collection of checks non issue of draft uh, non had non adherence to prescribed working hours not professionally behave they are not accepted the claim uh, the uh, complaint like that there are some things right and with uh, uh, with uh, this i mean uh, customer uh, some people have withdrawn the money without knowing to the customer so and calculations errors of interest rate calculation of higher interest rate like that anything you can complain right okay now you know what are the things a customer can complains to ombudsman right some of the things you need to remember right so the out of all this at least three four things you need to remember okay wrong calculations of interest rate non issue of draft to customers non adherence to prescribed working hours now you have to show no now we are going to discuss on the customer charter you have to show your bank opening hours closing hours right but if you are not deviating that you can complain right so there are so many things complaints so fraudulent withdrawal from your deposits somebody has taken your money right and things like that or maybe uh, hidden charges uh, taken by the customer by the banks those are the complaints right can be made to the ombudsman right okay clear now then usually you know in a bank usually in a bank so bank need to uh, because there are so many complaints are coming to bank so usually banks the who receive this complaints in the bank when your letter sent by the uh, sent by the uh, ombudsman it's go to the usually it's go to the bank ceo who otherwise in the bank they may nominated somebody to look into these cust uh, issues so bank has to appoint in that case complaint settlement officer in the bank who that complaint settlement officer in the bank now he is the person when the letters come from the uh, ombudsman so usually they just come to gm and gm will put all these thing to that particular officer now he is the person in bank usually go through all the letters what we have sent it, sent from the banks uh, uh, he also analyze the uh, case and maybe discuss with respect to management people or maybe gm and he go with some answer or some uh, answer to the uh, ombudsman he is the usually go to the ombudsman and meet the customer and then then they are they try to come to a settlement if he is not in a position to agree some settlement he can come back to the bank again and discuss with the management and try to find out some solution right okay so so usually uh uh, usually you know that as i explained to you so more complaints are usually coming for right now uh, another important thing you can say 
what is the maximum amount of uh, compensation? Remember, these are the important things I am telling you, right? What is the maximum amount of compensation the ombudsman can offer to a customer? You, but he can't tell, okay, uh, I am recommended 4 million, 5 million. No, he can't. He has a limitation. The dispute monetary value, if you're going to settle, is maximum is 3 million. He can't go more than that. Then if we have to go to the courts. Right? So therefore, the ombudsman can settle the value of any issues about the financial Complaints made by banks and the customer, maximum he can recover of up to 3 million. That's important, right? Okay, what's the maximum value? Is 2. And this scheme will be coordinated by a particular company. Now, remember, the financial ombudsman comes under particular financial institute of particular type of company you know you may heard about limited guarantee plc right public limited guarantee or offshore banking like offshore company like that so you are going to learn all these things with me in financial institution management when you go to the dbf dabf right so i'll take the uh, financial institution management subject so there we are going we may learn different type of companies comes under companies act right who give the license and things like that so remember the ombudsmans of work under the financial ombudsman sri lanka guarantee limited what is the guarantee limited before from other institutions they have guaranteed only to that amount. That is what you call the guarantees company. Right? So the financial ombudsman under what is what company? The financial ombudsman, Sri Lanka Guarantee Limited. Now the guarantee limited is is formed by you know within the banking fraternity, right? So uh, guarantee the under supervision of Central Bank of Sri Lanka, but it goes as a separate company. Right. Now another important thing. Now, how many of you are working in the bank? Now you see it is a mandatory to display the ombudsman office and the contact number at all your branch premises. That is according to the customer charter. Why you need to show your ombudsman office and the contact number to the customer? If you have any problem, we need to communicate to the customer. So please go to the ombudsman and if you are not satisfied with my branch or bank, then he can only go to the ombudsman. Right? So now most of the time, whatever the banks branches today, we have an electronic gadget, no? So otherwise you have to display or oh, now a lot of banks are doing we have an electronic rotating machines and display machine. At one time you saw the ombudsman name. Now now anybody who's working in the bank have not seen that. When you go to the branch tomorrow and see uh, this ombudsman name is displayed by your branch. Otherwise, central bank as a regulator can take actions against you, against the bank. Because you are supposed to display, it's a mandatory. Remember, the ombudsman office name, sometimes usually they put the word, put the name, but you put the name office address and the contact number, the telephone number at all branch premises as per the customer charter, which we are going to discuss. Clear now? Right? I hope you learn a lot of things about customer charter. Any questions, Futa? Right? Any questions? Right? We learn about the customer 
chart. Right? Okay. Have you understood about the customer chart? Any questions? Huh? No questions? No, sir. Right. Clear? Diniti, Dumali, Ayesh, I've just randomly checked, sir. Huh? Avihinsa, uh, Amansa, right? Okay. Clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Karen, Kishan, Lahiruni. Okay, clear? Right, right. Okay, now, so don't worry if you have, no, you can't ask any questions other than this, right? So, if I have any questions, come, I will put it here as a questions. Okay, right. Now, how you look at it? This is your, this year's question. This is your question, right? So 2020 March, come by. Now, question number six. Protections of customer right is considered important with increased crisis in the markets. Answer the following questions based on such protection schemes and controls adapted. One, what are the services offered by financial ombudsman? Right? So what's the answer you need to write? Five marks. Right? You, you can write anything, right? Now, uh, five marks, you can say uh, financial ombudsman. Right? Who is that financial ombudsman? Right? Financial ombudsman made, uh, is an independent person. Right, financial ombudsman is independent person. Right, and his main job is to satisfactory settlement of financial disputes between financial customers. And okay, so what are the services that he's offering? He usually attended what. So, complaints made by the customers, right? So, what type of complaints we can make? We discussed earlier about some misbehavior of customer, where banks, uh, uh, we discussed earlier, right? Those are the things, simple, no? Right? What are the services? Settlement, that's the main thing, right? Now, example, you can say, uh, independent person appointed by legislation to provide settlement of complaints made by customers. So complaints are like this and all these complaints. You don't want to put all. If you put few, it's okay. Right? And further, if you want to say, you can say it is services. Mostly the, uh, what are the services is rendered? Okay? Clear now? Very easy, no? Five marks you can get. Right. Clear now, Ombudsman. Now, we are going to discuss uh, yet another important area. I think you have some of you have learned. No, now I have. I can ask some question from you. Right, deposit insurance scheme. Now, I want to tell you something also. Now, deposit insurance schemes. Remember, now this scheme was there in the financial sector. Now, this deposit insurance scheme is, it is available in the banking sector or the financial sector as a voluntary scheme. Now, the moment you say voluntary scheme, if you like, you can join. Right? But it is there from 1987. Uh, and it was gazetted in March uh, 6 in 1987, right by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Monetary Board. It was gazetted, but it acted as a what? It acted as a as what? As a voluntary scheme. But in 2010, right? 2010. Central Bank of Sri Lanka make it mandatory, right? Make it 
mandate. So from 1987 up to 2010, it is there, but it was basically a voluntary scheme. So voluntary scheme means no matter what, but in 2010, right from 2010 October 1st, remember from 2010 October 1st. It was mandatory and called as Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme. Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme. All right. Now, who has usually do all these things? Monetary Law Act by the Monetary Board. Right. So first, they have established an insurance scheme. But, you know, this uh, is, is an insurance fund. Now, what do you mean by insurance? Mean if something have some problem, right? So, suppose the insurer, uh, uh, some member uh, financial institution uh, cancel their license or so suspend their license by the central bank due to some reason. So the customers can take some money from the that particular fund, right? And as of today, so this fund is developed, right? Now fund is having some money. Now this money with the uh, with this uh, fund can be used or used by the authorities if banks having some liquidity problem. If banks have some liquidity problem, bank can borrow money from this fund. That is what you call. Because if you have a bank is facing some liquidity problem, right? They can borrow money with interest, of course. But you need to put a guarantee or security for that. But you can borrow some money from under this deposit insurance fund at a very nominal interest rate. So therefore, from 2013 onwards, this scheme was changed from Sri Lanka deposit insurance scheme to Sri Lanka deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme. Now, why we have changed? Because they have enough money now in the fund they can give to banks or their, their member uh, institutions. For if they face some liquidity problem, they will support by granting a loan. So that is why from 2013, onwards this deposit insurance scheme changed from Sri Lanka deposit insurance scheme to Sri Lanka deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme okay clear now you know the rationally why the name change now this is my question Sri Lanka deposit insurance scheme was renamed in 2013 what is the new scheme called but the answer therefore can anybody tell me the answer for this question if the examiner asks you like this right sri lanka deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme now the examiner further asks why you have changed their names recently so they have the fund the insurance fund have some money you know how much is presently is having how much of money they are having now at the moment according to the central bank statistics it is estimated around 62 billion rupees right 62 million rupees billion rupees is the fund available putting on under it, six, how much? 
62 billion. Now they have enough money. Right? Okay? Enough money. Right? But at the time of they start the this scheme, the central bank has put 1.1 billion and they start the business. Right? First they put the money. How much they put? 1.1 billion. They start. Then how it comes down today? Around 62 billion. Because remember that the, all the participating member institutions need to pay premium to the that fund and that is how now it's become around 62. Now presently it's having around 60. Uh, 2 million approximately, but it may be way, right? So, what is the compensated to the maximum of money is given if suppose any organization suspend, central bank suspend or cancel? Now, um, two things suspend or cancel, both occasion. So, you can make use of this fund to compensate the customer to the maximum amount rupees 600,000. <clears throat> of course, this, uh, you know, this, uh, this was initiated uh, uh, with not 600,000. Actually, it is initiated uh, with 100,000 rupees per customer, per bank or per institution. Right? Okay. How can you get the compensated? Remember, per customer, Per institution. What is the method? Per customer, per institution, you can get 600,000. So that means if you have more money, what you need to do? Don't put in the same basket, no, same bag. You can put all bags 600, 600, 600. So all bags collapse, you get 600 each. Why? What is the methodology? Per customer, per institution, per customer, per institution, 600,000, <coughs> right? Now, why is that? Because all banks are giving premium, so they are eligible. What is the methodology? Per customer, remember, per customer, per institution. So therefore, don't put money in all one bank. So divided your money into 600,000. So you get the money if something happened to the bank. But remember, one bank, even though this, the National Service Bank have a separate uh, guarantee from the bank, government of Sri Lanka. So whatever the amount they give, even though if you put the money with the NSB for 1 million, so the government liable to pay 1 million, not covers on the Sri Lanka insurance. This is a separate thing. That is a statutory provisions by the special act by the government NSP. Right? That is why they are telling only government bank will give 100% for your capital as well as your interest. No other banks are telling. What they are telling? Raji Bank but why all other banks are covered under this? Now, who are the institutions covered under this? You need to know who are the institutions covered under this. Actually, it is started with as I told you with 100,000 and that is increased to 200,000 and it has increased to 300,000. Now they are giving around 600,000, right? But early it is initiated with this. But remember again, even though they started the uh, scheme from uh, 2010, October 1st, and the compensation started to pay from, wait, from 2012, uh, January 1st onwards. Why? Because we, they need to have a builder uh, fund now, right? So the compasses start from 2012. Okay. Now, who are the 
member institution who are the member institution covered under uh, this scheme right who are the people covered under the scheme right licensed licensed commercial bank specialized commercial bank. bank specialized bank and 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 why not finance companies right licensed commercial bank licensed specialized bank and all registered licensed finance companies right finance company but in ombudsman we say primary dealers leasing companies uh financial co finance companies uh then the licensed specialized bank and licensed commercial bank but here we are talking only three parties what are the three parties licensed finance companies licensed uh, specialized bank and licensed uh, licensed uh, commercial bank why not i ask a simple question why not leasing companies can anybody tell me the answer why leasing companies are not know. covered under deposit insurance scheme because they don't maintain the deposits uh yeah 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 okay so how to put it in a very proper uh, professional manner because they are not supposed to mobilize fund from where from who from public right so they are the leasing companies are not allowed to mobilize fund for public so therefore they don't have a deposits as you correctly said right so therefore they are not covered under this scheme but ombudsman covered right not this scheme okay right clear up to now any problem any any question you need to raise from me right okay now i told you so now the scheme originally started with only from 1.1 billion by the central bank now this scheme has come around as of today i mean maybe a little changes but around 62 billion now what to do with this bag or what this money how this money come to this level how they accumulated such a big fund that is the issue now how they generate such a fund because based on the deposits maintained by the financial institution banks and finance companies from their deposit base they need to pay certain percentage as premium that is why these like insurance company right so you need to pay premium that collections of those premium now has come for such a big fund now very interesting right now what is the premium charged by the banks and financial institution now you need to listen to me very carefully right so many questions sometimes they ask by the examiners what is a premium be to be lived levied on an eligible deposit now there is a word called eligible deposits there is a word called eligible deposits so what do you mean by eligible then the more the more what you say eligible deposits there are some deposits we are not going to take into account or take into account for calculations about the deposits now how they calculate the premium this is the way they calculate the premium right very carefully just listen to me and please put down some figures 
Now, they say premium will range from 0.1% to 0.1.5 per annum. As for the deposits held by the what? Held by the financial institution like banks and finance companies. Now, it is something similar to what? Some of the money we have it, we need to keep it. All the commercial banks, certain money having, they have to keep it certain percentage with central bank. What is that? How we, call right. that? Huh? How we call that? Statutory? SRR. SRR. Statutory SRR. Reserve Requirement. That is how much at the present amount? 2%. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Right. So likewise, so you need to pay from your total deposits, total eligible deposits. Range from 0 0.1 to 0 0.15. Now there's a range, you know. So why range? Why not one figure? I may they come. Why I may range account. Right. So you can write down under that. So how this range works. Okay. Okay, write down. This is the recap. For if your financial institution or sorry, bank, your bank having the capital adequacy ratio 14% or more, right? One, you put it down somewhere there, right? 14% or more. If suppose your finance uh, bank having capital adequacy ratio, I think you know what is capital adequacy ratio, car is either 14% or more than 14%. Your premium amount is how much? 0, 0,110. 0, 0,110%. Right? Okay. All other banks, all other banks, that mean the capital adequacy ratio is less than 14%, need to pay as a premium of how much? Point one two five percent per annum. Yeah, got that again, right? Okay. Then all finance companies, registered companies, how much of premium we need to pay as a percentage of the total deposit is point one five. Right. Now this is the way you have to pay premium. Okay, go ahead, Puda. Uh, could you please repeat it again? Okay. Right, okay. Can I draw this if you can see? Right? Can see, Puta? Right? Okay, I'll draw here, right? Suppose your car at capital adequacy ratio 14% or more. So, what? How much you have to pay? Point one percent annually from the from the eligible deposits. Right now, say eligible deposits is hundred. Say for an example. So how much you need to pay? Point one. Right? Sorry, point one. Okay. Hundred point one percent. Right. So how much they? Only 10 million, no? Right, like that. Okay. Now, that's the first one. Second one. Second, this is for banks, huh? This is for banks. Now, since your CER is less than 14%, all other banks, how much premium? Right, good. 0 0.125. 0 0.25 is more. Extra you need to pay. And all financial institutions, all financial uh, companies, right? So they don't have a car or whatever. 
So how much they have to pay? See, 0.1.5 percent from again the eligible deposits. Right? Clear now? Have written down? Okay, Buta. Okay, clear. Okay, sir. Thank right. you. Right. Okay. Now you want things. Right? So this is at the now now these things you need to pay now amount at the end of the immediately preceding financial year as for its audited account. Now this 14 percent you decided suppose your 2020 your 2020 audited right audited financial reports your maintained car is 14 percent so then right so accordingly if your car is changed you put into the next category right Clear? Yeah. so how you collect the car 14 percent based on your financial audited figure right now, now when are you going to pay this amount? That's another important thing. You, when are you going to pay this amount? Right? For, remember, for these banks, right? For banks, you need to pay quarterly. You need to pay quarterly. Make a given money, car to a gun, give one money, make a hadala. But for financial institution, you need to pay monthly. That's another important thing, right? For banks, they have, you need to pay the premium quarterly. That means once you complete, now say for an example, first quarter you finish at March 31st now. So you work it out for what is your balance at uh, March 14th, so deposit balance, right? So your bank, Eligible deposit say 100. So your say your one is 0.10, 0 0.1, right? So you need this is calculated for annually into three because of annual calculation. You have had to pay my quarterly now 23, say X amount. So X amount you need to pay. Clear? Right? Likewise. But as far as the Financial companies is concerned, you need to pay monthly. So that means, say your uh, your uh, finance company is having ten billion eligible deposit. So what is the amount? Hundred point one five divided by one hundred into ten billion into uh, twelve. Every month you need to pay. Right. Okay. Right. But there is, of course, quarterly you need to pay. Right? So remember another important thing. Another important thing. Suppose you are supposed to pay, whether it's a finance company or whether it is a bank, the premium you need to pay within 15 days. Within 15 days. Remember important things. Now say you calculate and say March 31st 3. So you need to pay before 4 2021. This premium. Same as finance companies. If you are not paying stipulated period that means 15 days you will be charged you will be charged penalty. How much? You will charge the penalty of prevailing treasury bill rate for 91 days plus 200 basis point. That means 2%. My goodness. Now say your figure you have not pay here. Say your PB rate is uh, say 0.5%. Uh, for example, then 2%. So you have to add another 6% to this payment. Well, that you have to pay. They're rather clear. 
Any questions? Right, you can't pay late, right? There's a penalty charges. Are there any sure clear there? Please, I need a response from you. Understood? No, I, I will tell you again, don't worry. Because you need to understand very thoroughly this. Are there another? Okay. Excuse me, sir. How to yeah, calculate sure. the penalty? Right. Calculated penalty now say now how banks need to pay the uh, premium. Banks need to pay the premium quarterly. But finance companies need to pay the premium monthly. Clear? You understood? Right? Now, the premium you need to pay by the banks quarterly. Right? That means, suppose now this year, uh, what is the quarter end is 31st March, no? Right? So, March, at the end of the March, you calculate the total deposit with your uh, eligible deposit with your bank and work it out uh, how much it is. Suppose your bank is more than 14% now, CAR, CAR. So, you calculate uh, your total deposit in by uh, about, about uh, 0.10%. Right, and you have to pay annual figure no 1.0, so you make it to three months, right? And then you pay for finance institution uh, that means finance companies, you need to pay the how much monthly you need to pay 0.15 from your eligible deposits, right? Now, this payment has to be made to the respective uh, fund in the central bank before 15 days within 15 days once you complete that particular quarter now say for an example for bank if you finish your quarter uh, first quarter in 31st of march before 15th of uh, april you need to pay your premium to the fund that means to the central bank for finance companies you need to pay Every month, now say, uh, now say, example, February, right? Now, when you're going to pay February premium to the central bank? Before 15th of March. That means every month, finance company need to pay premium, whereas the banks need to pay, how, how long? Every quarterly. So what is the, if you are not pay the, Premium at stipulated date between that 15 days period. If you go for payment of say 13, 14, 16 percent, uh, 16 day, you will be charged penal rate of treasury bill rate prevailing the treasury bill rate as a date plus two percent extra. That is a penal rate. There are the hurry to that. Clear the that I can among I can. Not understood there, understood there. Yes, sir. Right, sure, eh? Okay, hurry the right. Everybody understood because it's very important because there are so many questions are coming. Everybody is understood, right? Okay, clear. Right now. So that is why uh, I go a little slow, right? This is very important. Now you, you know how to calculate the premium. Now they say, now we'll answer to this question. First, what is the question? In, this is my question, appeared in 2015, March 2015. Under Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme, the premium required to be paid by member institutions on eligible deposits on monthly stock quarterly basis will range from what is the correct answer? Carefully things. What is the correct answer? B. Answer B. Very good. Why? That's the range, right? But here they want us. What is how much you need to pay for finance companies? How much you need to pay for banks? They never ask. They say, what is the range? Right? Okay. Right. Answer is correct. Answer is B. 
Now, try to answer to this question. This is a surface question. This is your September 2019. I need answer for A, B, C, D, E. Five marks given uh, here for answering A, B, C, D. Right, now tell me, this is your uh, survey of financial system question. Tell me the answer. For A, quarterly. A is how much? Reporting frequency A, what's the answer? Quarterly. Quarterly, good, quarterly, very good. B, finance registered finance companies reporting frequencies are what? When? Monthly. Monthly, good. You got two points, right. Then C, what is the premium? Point, point, point 0.10%. Point 0.10, good, right. Suppose the less than that, what is the answer should be? 0.125%. 0.125. Good. Three marks. D? 0.15%. 0.15. E? 600,000 rupees. Very good. Now you see your five marks easily you obtain. Right? I think, I, heard, I hope everybody understood the concept. Right? Now you can't answer this if you don't know this. Right? So you need to answer, you need to remember. Now sometimes they will ask 14 instead of 14, they will change it the other way around. Then premium will be changed. Right. Okay. Now we move into next one. Now we discuss what is the uh, objective of a deposit insurance scheme. Right? Now, what is the main objective of the deposit insurance scheme? As we, uh, as we explained like earlier, right? The principal objective of a deposit insurance scheme, it is there, right? Don't write second one, uh, same, right? Deposit insurance scheme contribute to the stability of the country's financial system and protect less financially sophisticated depositors from the loss of their deposit when financial institution fails or insolvency, right? Now, suppose the central bank took a decision to pay. Now, use what is the reason uh, financial institution, uh, Sri Lanka, say, uh, uh, a central bank has taken action to pay the compensation. Latest, latest uh, financial institution suspend their license. They are not cancelled it, right? They suspend, but still you can pay. What is the financial institution recently uh, paid under the deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme? What is the financial to financial institution? Uh, customers obtain the compensation. What is the two financial institution recently? Very recently obtained the scheme as uh, uh, compensation. One is yeah, there is a trust investment and the yes, finance. And the finance Kali. And other one is what? Swarna Mahal Finance. Swarna Mahal Financial Services. Right? Okay, the finance. Now, for the last so many years, if you really look at for last couple of years, right? So from this fund, right? Now, this some of the things you need to know. I'm, I'm telling everything to you all, right? Now, this first, the very, uh, in 2018, you know, the Central Investment and Finance Limited was uh, cancelled their license by the Central Bank in 2018. They pay the compensation. Then uh, in, in, in uh, 2019, you know, there are two companies again cancelled by the Central Bank. That is Standard Credit Finance and TKS Finance. 
where which is located at uh, Buddhist College, uh, close to to Mulajang, Lifton, Ekalangatibuni. So that was TK's finance and Standard uh, Credit Finance. In 2019, they have cancelled. Now in 2020, the finance cancelled. So they also paid, but recently they have temporarily suspended the payment, uh, suspend, but not fully cancelled yet, right? Remember, temporary suspend, but remember the financial institution cancel or suspension can be given this compensation, right? You need to understand that also. Now, now I'll ask you one question. Yeah, you won't get these questions, right? Ah, uh, Central Bank of Sri Lanka is liable to pay all money due to the customers under this deposit insurance scheme. I ask you a simple question. Whether the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is liable to pay once they cancel the uh, license of a particular institution are liable to pay compensation to the customers. Yes or no? Yeah, Peter, you can get a finance company. According to the deposit insurance scheme, the central bank, being the uh, administrator of that fund, need to pay compensation to those customers. I'm asking whether they are legally liable or not. What's the answer? Yes, they should pay, sir. Ah, they should pay. Yes. So, any other alternatives answer? Remember, according to this act, according to this scheme, central bank is not liable. But, they liable as pro as far as if they have the adequate fund in the fund scheme and the fund, then they have to pay. Otherwise, they are not liable. Okay, they can make that may deposit insurance scheme make it you know the fund again. What is the value of now? Sixty two billion. Right, me fund ki pramana wa chali ti pot vitarai ke wadde bendila city. Etna me ka villa support te ka vitarai. Then na leda. That doesn't mean they need to pay. Then he thought no ko okko ko finance company te ka wadde no. Ab he thamo. Isu na me ke wadde puru wadde. Suppose all finance companies have collapsed. Can central bank pay? Because they don't have money, you know. From where they pay that compensation? From the from where? From where they pay the compensation? From the fund. From the insurance fund. Right? So that fund will be accumulated from the premium from the from whom? From the member institutions. Right? If they don't have adequate fund in the uh, scheme, how can they pay? Right? Remember that also, right? So we won't expect a financial institution to collapse, but that is the legal fund. Legal fund. Okay? That is why the accumulating fund, that is why they uh, try to improve the funds, excess fund, by giving loans, by investing in treasury bills, uh, collecting fines, collecting premiums. This is how they have credited the funds to improve the fund. Okay, clear? Right? So that doesn't mean because that depends on the available funds, right? The liability generally uh, guaranteed, but depend on the funds 
but liability not guaranteed but depend on the funds available in the deposit insurance scheme only they pay then they will take actions to pay certain proportionately not 600,000 maybe 100,000 like that okay clear remember right okay so this is an something some added value right for protect the customers okay right so deposit insurance have customer confidence in banks and retain deposit with same bank without moving from bank to bank for safety now so this facility is a uh, benefited right so banks otherwise customers are moving from bank to bank because this facility is given to all the bank right now i'll come to one thing now i told you there are some deposits when you're calculating your premium certain deposits are excluded so what are the deposits you are not going to take into account these are the account deposits Right. I will now give you, a, I will work out some question, right? There are some uh, mathematics, then you know how to do that. Calculating of premium. So no, one day the questions will come like this. But so far no questions asked like this. Suppose bank ABC. Say bank ABC. So end of the quarter, the deposit base is like this, right? Customers they have one hundred billion customers deposits, right? Why? Right? Deposit maintained by other financial institutions like now like abc is having some part deposits say that amount is 10 billion right third one we'll take one by one government of sri lanka so the department of uh, department customs say customs customs say departments customs as the deposits of 50 billion with your ABC bank custom deposits right so your directors your ABC directors and key management people having deposit of 10 billion five the loans granted to customers who deposit that uh, who has taken loans against deposits right say 10 billion so then you say uh, dormant accounts deposits value say 5 billion and abundant property value 2 billion so this is your total deposits is come to 100 110 160 170 180 and 5 say 190 and 190 billion 190 billion Right? This is your total deposits. So now, what is the, when you're going to pay premium, what is the amount you are going to take? Whether you are going to take 180, whether you are going to take 180, whether you are going to take 170. 100 or you are going to take 90 
100 yeah. billion. 100. Why? Some more thing? It is customer's uh, deposit. Now, these deposits are not taken into account. Those are we call deposits exclude when you are going to take calculating this. But you forget something. You have to deduct 10 billion also because loan granted against these deposits. If it is the take from this, if you are not included here, you have to deduct that those. Clear? Yeah? Why you have taken loans? No. They are not. You take a loss against this deposit, no. Right? Then if you have not calculated work it out, calculated like your otherwise you take only 100 billion. Good. I think others understood, right? So when you're calculating the deposit for premium, mind you, you have to exclude these deposits. What are the deposits exclude? Deposit of member banks and finance companies. Say ABC having some monies uh, by other finance companies, other banks, we need to avoid. Government of Sri Lanka, the institutions of Sri Lankan government, if they deposit the money, they also excluded. Shareholders, directors, KP of the related parties of that bank excluded. Deposit held as collateral against any amount, any loan granted, excluded. Deposit falling within the meaning of abundant property of the Banking Act, avoided. Dormant account balances, avoided. So these are we call deposits who excluded. Clear? Understood? At the deposit calculate premium Meva Gananga no other than I think Kodhari over Garantika Dila, Samahara Ladder, a hundred Bulwang. How to calc what is the premium the particular bank need to pay? They say bank having I mean, never a capital adequacy ratio of 14 percent. These are the compositions of the bank deposits. They give some figures. Please calculate the quarterly figures. They put something also, they say. Uh, the bank is uh, failed to pay uh, at the stipulated time period. So what is the total payment? Then you have to add the penalty also for that. Right. So so don't worry. So our exam is not so sophisticated. But these are the things you need to know if the questions comes like that. Now the questions are comes little tougher and tougher now. Right. OK. Have you understood now? Right. Then there's a two words here. No? So nobody asks from me. There are two words. What is that? Abundant property and dormant account. What is abundant property? What do you mean by abundant property? What is the difference between abundant property and a dormant account? Nobody is asked from me, right? Let's look at it. Okay. Abundant. Right now, the question in March 2016 What is meant by abundant property? My question What is a dormant account and what is the difference between these two? Can anybody tell me what is abundant property? Then, Ape life for a Samala to ignore abundant property. Kalia Kitim Laukarla, Athara, the Hakan at the barn. Evagika, the Mimika, abundant property of banks. Right? What is the customer of... fail to uh, pay the loans against the property? Mm -hmm. Not that. What do you what do you put a dormant account in your bag? How you categorize your dormant account? If the customer fails to do any transactions within 10 years, uh, that will be categorized as the abandoned property. And if the customer we won't be able to do any transactions within six months. It will be categorized as the dormant account. Good. But there's a slight modification to your answer. Good. Correct. The answer is correct. But I will I will, I will reframe it a little bit. Your answer is exactly correct. So what is abundant property? So please write there what is meant by abundant property. I will just give you a, a definition for that. Uh, uh, 
say uh, uh, the deposits and other funds, right? Right now, deposits and other funds of customers, deposits and other funds of customers, deposits and other funds, any other funds of customers that have been dormant that have been dormant that have been dormant for more than 10 years that have been dormant for more than 10 years without any communication without any communications or instruction from the customer it's called as abandoned property i've repeated again deposits and other funds of customers that have been dormant deposits and other funds of customers that have been dormant for more than 10 years without any communications or instruction from the customer that can be considered as abandoned property. So then what is a dormant account? Right. Write down. If a savings or time deposits, if a savings or time deposits remains idle, if a savings or time deposits remains idle, I-D-L-E, for more than now some students said six months but don't put six months i'll tell you why right if a savings so time deposits remain idle for more than a specific period what specific period such as such as one year two year or six months that periods such as one year okay six months one year or two year as per the policy of respective banks clear now in your bank may be six months but some other banks is maybe one year some other banks may be two years but when this comes to the abundant properties of X, it's dormant for more than 10 years, whereas a dormant, uh, the specified periods may be differ from bank to bank. It may go from six months, one year to one. So that is according to the policy of respective bank. So if a savings or time deposit remain idle for more than a specific period, such as six months, one year or two year, as for the policy of the respective bank, we call a dormant account. Clear now? Now you know what is the difference between dormant account and a abandoned property. Clear? Are there? If you miss, please tell me. I will read uh, till again for you. So these are the things you need to learn. Right? Okay. Are there? Clear? Right. Yes, so what? Uh, okay, go ahead. Any question? Somebody want to uh, ask me a question or you're okay? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, it's clear, sir. Clear. All right. Okay. Next one. So what is the purposes of deposit insurance scheme? So what is the purpose? Actually, why? That is not objective, right? This is purpose. The purposes of deposit insurance scheme a liquidity support scheme first to protect customer that is why we learn all these things right right protect customers maintain the soundness of the financial system providing funding support to certain nba files and banks why how providing how liquidity right Okay, so if you put three is more than enough, right? 
So you can say encourage savings. You can put another point. Uh, uh, if you say protect, uh, uh, better to put protect uh, small deposit customers. Better to put protect small deposit customers, right? Then uh, you can put build customer trust and confidence, another point. Build up customer confidence, another point, purpose. Build up customer confidence. Then you can put another one, encourage savings. You can put another purpose, discourage illegal financial institutions. People who go for uh, illegal financial institution for higher returns, they little fear because they may lose the money. So therefore, next point, discourage illegal financial institutions, right? There are so many purposes, okay? Right. But yes, now, what are the disadvantages of deposit insurance scheme? What are the disadvantages of deposit insurance scheme? Right. Okay. Right. So I will, we will discuss those things later on, right? Uh, in next uh, Thursday. What are the, this is your questions. Then I will ask you, this is easy. What is the maximum amount of compensation payment under the Sri Lanka deposit insurance scheme? How much? Please see. Oh. Then yes, what is the dual? Yeah, 600,000. What is the dual role of deposit insurance? Who is responsible for the operations and management of this scheme? What are the disadvantages of this scheme? Can you answer to this? Now, this is your non-bank financial business. B. Uh -uh. What one? Huh? D. What's the answer? Divina Guma Bank. Divina Guma Banks, because this is not covered, right? So only the licensed commercial bank, licensed specialized bank, licensed finance companies only having the deposit insurance, right? So this is your 2021 exam. That is non-bank financial business, right? Answer is Divina Guma Bank. Or sometimes you say you need trust. What is the answer? Answer unit trust. Okay. Sometimes the examiner can put instead of Divina Guma Bank, unit trust. Unit trust is not covered. No? Right. Okay. So we are going to discuss uh, some more points. Uh, and this is the uh, again the non bank financial institution. And this is the uh, survey of financial system this time. They asked the question briefly discuss Sri Lanka deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme introduced by the central bank of sri lanka five five marks so not i'll tell you what you need to write uh, such a questions right okay so then once once we completed right so we covered the deposit insurance scheme and we move into uh, the customer charge right uh, so therefore uh, students we will discuss those things right uh, next Thursday, uh, next Friday, right? Next Friday. So are you aware? So we are going to have extra classes on uh, next uh, Friday. Uh, that is on Poe Day, right? Uh, Poe Day. And so we will continue from this proceed. And then, and then we uh, do the balance part, right? Okay, I hope you understood. Right, now what do you think, Puta? You learn something, still we need to learn, huh? uh, but uh, one students you learn more than uh, what you are learned under non-bank financial institution. Did you get up with the deposit insurance scheme maker? Not it. Huh? No idea. Huh? Okay, right. Right, so see you on next uh, Friday uh, to continue with. Okay. I think you understood everything clearly, right?